Alrighty, Hasses, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you an example of how you can use Scene Builder to build an actual cool looking interface. And before we do, I need to tell you a story. Yesterday, I was getting ice cream with my mom, my sister, and her boyfriend. And we were at this restaurant called Friendly's. And this old guy walked in. He was like, must have been like 70 something. And he had a walking stick. And my sister thought that it was a selfie stick because <laughs> he was standing there waiting to get seated and he had it. And uh, if you guys don't know what a selfie stick is, apparently it's just like a long, uh, just like a stick basically that you stick your camera on the end and you can take selfies. She thought he was carrying <laughs> a 70 year old man. Oh God. Funny, funny stuff there. All right. So. Where was I? We're going to be using Scene Builder to build an actual interface. But for those of you who have a JetBrains IDE, like I do, I'm using IntelliJ. I'll show you how to set it up. It's really easy. If you go to File, Settings, then I'll drag this so you guys can see it. Go to Languages and Frameworks and click on Java FX. It's going to ask for a path to Scene Builder. Now, as long as you installed it in all the default locations and you didn't do anything weird whenever um, you were installing it your path is going to be right here you're essentially looking for this executable file now the reason that it needs that is because once you have that path set then what you can do is you can actually just right click these and choose I know you guys can't see the option but there's an option that call is called open in scene builder so there you go there's a little you know cool integration that you can do and let me adjust this get everything nice and pretty and alright so let's say that we're making a program um, like for a social network or something well what we'd want to do is if we don't have any template then we can just choose new but since we actually right click that in JetBrains and hit open in scene builder this file is actually a representation of this fxml file so you guys are gonna see whenever I start dragging stuff and I save it this FXML is automatically going to be updated, which is pretty cool. So, for this program, I actually want to use a border pane. So, I'm going to delete this because it already is using a grid pane. P -p pane. Delete that and drag out a border pane. Looking nice, man. Alright, so now we have five sections top, left, center, right, and bottom. So for the top, I actually want to put a menu bar across here and then some toolbars, kind of like this is set up right here. So the first thing I want to do is use a VBox and I can either drag it right here and I could say, okay, top, center, try to get it exactly where I want it. Or you can actually just drag it right in here. And I don't know, I usually prefer dragging it right here because then you know exactly how things are going to be positioned. So now our top section has a V box, which is pretty cool. So now if I just do something like menu bar, and by the way, you can either find everything manually, like uh, I want to add some controls, but I'm not really sure what I want to add. If you know exactly what you want to add, then instead of looking through these menus, it's actually faster just to type it. So the first thing that I'm going to add is a menu bar, and I'm going to drag that right in VBox, so now we have a menu bar, and by default it gives you expand this. It gives you a couple different menus. Of course, you can override them later if you want. And what can I do? Let me um also add an H box right here. So H box in my VBox. So now we have an H box underneath this menu bar. Why did I do that? Well, say that I wanted to have a section where the user could log in. So I'm going to have a place for their username and I don't know, maybe their password. So if I take this text field, then I'm going to drag it right in my H box so it appears right there. And you can actually drag another one, or if you just want to duplicate an item, you can right click it and hit duplicate. So now let me just add two buttons because this looks kind of weird so I'm gonna take a button and also add it to my HBox and I'm gonna duplicate this as well alright now on the left hand side I am just going to put um, 
let's say we're going to make a tree view so the user can navigate. So I'm going to take tree view and I'm going to stick it in the left. All right, so now this area on the left hand side is going to be a tree view. Now whenever I'm just designing and I didn't link it up to all my data behind the scenes yet, I kind of like to have something there because it just looks weird this wireframe. So if you actually go to view, you can choose show sample data and this is going to give you some default data. Again, whenever you actually run your program, this isn't going to be here, but just so, you know, you get a little better visualization of what's going on. I like to have it. Now for the center area, I actually want to have, let's just have a text area for now. So text area, drag it out in the center. All right, now the user can like type text in there. And um, for the bottom, I am actually going to have an H box as well. So you know at like, um, like in the bottom of most software you have, I don't know, like these little icons and just like a little status bar of what's going on with your program. I'm going to drag an H box in the bottom and I'm just going to add a label to it in my H box. All right, so we have a really simple looking layout. I mean, I have all of my items exactly in the right sections that I want them, but everything, you know, kind of looks a little bit goofy. So let's start making this look a little bit prettier. The first thing I want to do is change the text on these buttons. So I'm going to double click this and I'm going to type a log in. So you can double click it and edit the text or what you can do is select it and you can edit the text in the properties panel and this one will be like settings and hit enter. So the next thing I want to do if I give myself a little bit more room here is I pretty much want to adjust the sizes of all of these sections or areas because usually this top area isn't taking up half your screen and right now it's just look like it's bunching everything else together. So what I can actually do is this. If I select VBox, I'm going to go to Modify Use Computed Sizes. Now I'm also going to go to this menu bar and when I select it, by the blue outlines it looks like it's pretty good size right here. You know, it's not responsible for pushing everything down. This HBox, however, it's taking up a lot more area than I want. So I'm going to choose Modify Use Computed Sizes as well. Now this actually just gives it a non-static value and it's really good for whenever you're making um, like pieces of software that you want to be able to adjust no matter how big the window is. Um, I don't want to use the term responsive but if you guys know what a responsive website is, basically adjust, adjust properly to the size of the window then you probably want to use computed sizes. So um, alright that looks pretty good. What I want to do now is actually just adjust the padding and spacing of these elements. So make sure you have your H box selected, which is this little toolbar section right here in, in the layout. Let's say that we want to give it a margin of like eight for everything. So eight, 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 eight. All right, that looks pretty good. Give me some, you know, margin around the borders, but now these elements are still kind of bunched together. So an H box, you can actually just change the spacing of it and let's say let's see how 10 looks and I actually want to do the same for this bottom area since you know usually these bottom status bars are really thin so I'm gonna select this H box modify use computed sizes and, and let me give it a little bit of padding so I'll give it like um two pixels all around And someone is texting me in the middle of my video. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. And by the way, if you ever just want to preview this real quick in the actual window instead of just looking at it in the editor, you can go to preview, show preview in a window. And there you go. So, all right, this is stretching out exactly how I want it to. You know, whenever we expand it, the height of it, this tree view right here expands. Looks good. Everything is sweet, but one other cool trick I'm going to show you guys is how to do this you know actually let me show you this you know whenever you have some toolbars you want some items on the left and some items on the right like these buttons right here well did I close out of that 
We'll say that we wanted to do that with our program. Well, whenever we're expanding this, we actually want this login button and button, which I thought I changed to settings, to appear on the right. So anytime you want to do that, you can actually just type region right like this and drag a blank region in between right like that so we now have this blank region between these inputs and these two buttons right here now obviously it doesn't look that great <laughs> right now so we're gonna go over to H grow which means horizontal grow and we're gonna select always this means that it's always going to resize whenever the window resizes whenever the size of the window changes and now if we just go to modify use computed sizes check out what happens now so preview show preview in window our buttons are now floating to the right or they look like they are but we really know that there's a invisible region right here and whenever I resize my window pretty cool effect eh? alright so our interface is looking alright actually one other thing I want to do real quick before I show you guys how to hook up all the controllers and everything is in these text fields I am gonna just add some prompt text so it'll be like a username and for this one I'm just gonna change it to password just so the user knows that they can actually type their stuff and log in if they want to so I type something like the new Boston and my password is a uh, like ham bacon tuna whatever and of course we would want to change that to a password field so it isn't plain text but good enough so now you're like alright cool all my controls are looking sweet how do I actually hook this up to code well let me hide these and show you guys this so you know that what we're doing is essentially editing this fxml file and we want to hook it up to this controller right here so to do that if we go to the controller right here it's gonna ask us for a controller class now remember this is sample dot controller so now whenever we run this it's gonna be hooked up to that controller class how can we test this well if we actually hop right into the controller we can just build you know a test method real quick and we'll just say like public void um what can we do we'll just say that whenever we click this login button we're just gonna print something out in the terminal this is just to show you guys how you can co connect elements to your controller but uh, you guys would obviously want to do something useful so I'll say login button clicked and we'll just say system out print line user logged in alright so now we have a method in our controller called login button clicked so if we hop back over to scene builder we can actually click this login button right here and in the code section now that we hooked up our controller if we call on action you're gonna see that we now have the method that we just made login button click now again what you typically want to do is you want to give these buttons ID so you can reference them and I already told you guys how to do you know all the code so I don't wanna repeat myself since you you know already know but now if we just hit file and save this and actually one other thing I want to do is this is the default size for our window right here I'm gonna change this because 300 by 275 for that program is really small and it's gonna look goofy so I'm gonna change the default window size to 800 by 500 but of course whenever you run this we can resize it if we want to so resize it and as you see already you see that tree view this is what I was talking about how that sample data is just for whenever we were designing it whenever we want run our actual program we're actually gonna want to populate this with like the different pages to whatever piece of software we're making but la 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 type in your password click login and check it out whenever I click it we run some code so there you go that's the core basics of how you make a really simple interface with FX, FXML and take note that since I saved that I'm gonna hop back into my FXML file in IntelliJ and everything got updated manually 
So if I want to, I can do, you know, some coding right in here, hop back to Scene Builder, everything's going to work fine. And you can use these two tools in conjunction with each other, and it makes for some really awesome GUI development. So there you go. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Any questions, you can ask me on the forum. I'm also going to be taking all of this code and sticking it on my GitHub page. So if you just want to copy it, paste it in, and play around with it, feel free. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.